well. Struggling with sound stuff is always fun. But I want to thank everybody in chat who's been hanging out and waiting patiently, I might add. <laughs> Nicole Linder is famous for her technology dampening uh, aura is blamed again, and she's not even here. Yeah, the sound demons are really hard to placate. Thank you, Bad Devil. Um, hey, you know what this is? It's Thursday, and Thursday is a program that happens every Thursday, and it talks about everything powered by the Adventure Game Engine. That's our proprietary engine for games like Fantasy Age and Modern Age and Cthulhu Awakens and Blue Rose and Fifth Season, and what else am I missing? The Expanse. The Expanse. That's right. Thank you. Well, did you hear that voice in the background? I've got two guests with me, and I, you folks are getting spoiled because um, this is the second time in a row we get to hang out with them. Ta-da! Hey, guys. <laughs> you look scared. Um, welcome to Thursday, and thank you for joining. And uh, we got a lot of stuff going on today. Um, not the least of which is, as you can see by the QR code at the bottom right, we have a new release. Now, here's the thing. It was really difficult to choose which one of you because you, did, you recently did a swap. And so, yeah. And so uh, there's there's uh, Ian's taking over the Cthulhu Awakens. And Malcolm, you're taking over the Fantasy Age. And, and we're still doing, we're passing the baton. So that's what this is, really. Uh, a baton passing. But uh, who wants to talk about, um, who wants to open on on our uh, Cthulhu Awakens quick start? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I will. Um, so the quick start is uh, is something that I sought out Shawningham for. Uh, Shawningham is a, um, a writer uh, located in Wales, and uh, they are also um, a Stoker Award uh, nominated writer for working on something called We Don't Go Back. Uh, nice. which is a book on folklore. And uh, and Sean has appeared in folklore documentaries, folk horror documentaries, you know. A horror. In English, I love that it. language that I speak. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I was very, uh, I was very interested in getting, um, getting their take. Um, nice. So they worked on the core book. And so I approached them to do the um, the quick start. And for the quick start, um, there is, I guess, a folk legend about, you know, who put Bella in the witch elm, which is um, about the discovery of the corpse of a woman in the post-war period uh, oh. in a witch elm. And there are stories about this, and you can look them up. Um, and I am way worse at uh, describing them than, say, someone like Sean would be. But what they did is they used that as the basis for an adventure set in 1940 during the Blitz. Uh, cool. It looks really cool. Uh, in a little town called Hagley. And the neat thing about it is that, uh, okay, we're about to get very English here, but like you have Pit sort of, uh, like, you know, um, everybody hold it together, you know, English grit, boys own adventure kind of thing, right? That involve young people and, you know, a kind of idealized rural England, right? So what Sean has done is taken that and shifted it into, you know, a terrifying horror scenario that involves a ritual to uh, bring down uh, a Nazi warplane for reasons. Um, oh. I don't want to spoil too much about the adventure. And aside from that, they're bad guys. We Genesis. don't like them. Sorry, I was just saying. Aside from the fact that we just don't like them, they're bad guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yes, yes. And and the stance of the adventure is very clear on that. Um, <laughs> uh, so it takes that and it turns it takes that situation it turns it into an origin story uh for that folk uh for that folklore uh, for that bit of folklore right it's something that i could never have imagined 
in a gajillion years because I don't have the knowledge for it. So uh, I it was pretty fun to uh, to take that. My role in working on it, um, it's credited to both of us, is that I, you know, um, I did some development, but I mostly added the mechanical parts because Sean wanted to focus on the story primarily, right? And so throughout it, you have little guides about, say, this is your first time doing a test or this is your first combat, right? And this is how we deal with these things. Like all of our quick starts, all the rules you need to play are in the front along with some sample characters. A number of the characters, um, you pick their gender. There are a couple where you don't just because the history um, means that it's important that they that particular character be a particular gender. Um, and one of the things I did as well was I did a lot of research on the town of Hagley where the adventure is set. And uh, it was really inter <laughs> interesting to dig through that because I had to go um, into their, you know, um, you know, they have a, a community devoted to recording the the village's history, right? right? And I'm coming in as a longtime fan of cozy murder mysteries, oh, like, sure. uh, like Midsummer Murders. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so what I had to do was see, you know, there are a number of things that Sean mentions in passing through their own research, and I built it out with like a draft map and some more things about the relative locations of things and a lot of sort of behind it's weird because there's kind of a behind the there's kind of behind the adventure business in the adventure where you have to think of what um what the various characters and creatures and elements of the adventure are doing minus um what the player characters are doing right so what are they actually doing in the background the danger with that is you can end up going into you know essentially just writing fiction in which the pcs happen to incidentally appear right so it doesn't go that far um but uh but we kind of get a sense of what the community is up to which is very consequential to, okay. to what happens in the adventure um because of course there's you know there's a group of people who follow the old ways, always popular in folklore, um, and they are involved in it too, right? Is instigating this ritual and yeah, and also there are big scary trees. Seriously though, if you go well, to if you go to the UK and look at old trees, those things are creepy. Yeah, they are. I mean, they do kind they of are. evoke a certain vibe. But let me add. I'm going to add this real fast. Let's take a mm -hmm. look at this. Um, here's okay. So the god beneath the tree. There's a creepy tree. Now I was wondering. So that's like a, a glyph or a symbol of some kind. Yeah. With uh, with all the the evil acolytes, or well, I mean, you know, oh, I, they're suppose, not evil. I suppose. Yeah. I mean, I. What would, are they? That's in the adventure that we don't uh, want to spoil. Right? That's right. Um, well, there they are, uh, just hanging out, having a good time, good yeah, friends, that's... having good fun with the tree and then oh we've got a little you can't really see it because i've blocked it with your heads <laughs> yes the other interesting thing was having to do a bunch of research on what Oops. uh you know <laughs> what what happened during the blitz right uh um, here's what's great real quick just before we move on into um that i want to say you know look at this cthulhu awakens rpg quick start it's free oh yeah it's free too i guess that is more important than talking about Everyone wants to know more about the Blitz. Trivia. But <laughs> Everyone's yes, you pick it up, you'll dying learn the game. for it. Yes. They are, they're dying for it. As or as they say in the UK, they're gagging for it. I would also like to just add that, like, I, I have a few friends who've, like, cracked open the book already, and there's a lot in there. It's a it's a meaty book, um, and, and it can be a little intimidating. And the quick start's a great way to just be able to dive in without yeah having to absorb everything that's in the core book and once you yeah you know, once you've done that it'd be easy you know you'll understand you know what you're looking at easier in, in the core absolutely even for the entire yeah for the entire cthulhu awakens experience right yes, yes yeah yeah that's awesome and so um let me real quick i just want to go over where folks can pick this up now here first of all i want to draw your attention to we have on drive through rpg and roll 20 the vtt pack um mm -hmm. 
uh, we've got uh, great tokens in here. Um, really great. Like here's here's the breakdown. But for those of you who may be a part of our little community project that we will be launching soon, uh, called the Atomic Think Tank. If you head on over to the article that I posted called The Free Cthulhu Awakens Quick Start is available now. Attached to that uh, is a, a zip file with some free tokens put together oh, hey. just for you. That's yeah. Nice. Yeah. Very, I'm very nice. Download those. Yeah. Go over, head over and download those. And uh, you may be wondering, well, how do I do that? Um, you will want to head to. Uh, you know, I'm going to test something out, and uh, yeah, we'll see. The trucker cap—that's my favorite ghoul. Oh, do we have that? <laughs> do I, I think I saw that. Let me. Yeah, I thought I saw it too. Uh, let's see. Where are you, trucker hat ghoul? Oh, trucker hat. I think it's a trucker cat. Oh, trucker, trucker cat. cat ghoul, trucker right? hat. Trucker hat. No, I guess. Yeah. Oh, there he is. There he is, right here. Oh, yeah. there we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can hear a little, a little <laughs> hard to say, but uh, but cool nonetheless. Um, Just a hard working fella hauling right? cargoes of human flesh. <laughs> it's your blue collar pal. State lines. Yeah, he's uh, he's looking ghoulish. Trying to keep the family. <laughs> a hipster ghoul too. I mean, that's just uh, all of that is very interesting. Um, but I also wanted to mention that um, if you had to go to the atomic thinktank.com I want to tell me what you see when you go there uh, you can tell me in chat as well um, also you know we were so coming in so hot on this that I want to say hi to folks who jump uh, who are in chat we've got Rain talking about Dragon Age that was one I missed thank you very much and uh, Ali's here as well Temp says something in Cthulhuan which I do appreciate but will not try to say um, let's see do 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 Duke says hello and I, I am your very own disembodied Troy. Um, yeah, Cthulhu Patagon. That's yeah, is that, how, is that how you say it? <laughs> or, or, I don't know. It all has such a bad mouth feel. Um, but, uh, but again, thanks to chat for, for hanging out and, and enduring the silence. Uh, Jim Jonesy says uh, that the ghoul was his uh, favorite uh, token to make uh, and ours to talk about. Um, and then we've got uh, also over at Drive Through RPG, and I've dropped links in chat. You can pick up the uh, the PDF and um, not the, okay, gotcha. Go to atomicthinktank.com. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Atomicthinktank.com. And because uh, if you went to the other one, you probably ran into something weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that'll get you there, atomicthinktank.com. And uh, and then, you know, you're going to want to uh, express interest and sign up. And, you know, um, I take the thickets pronunciation as canon. The thickets pronunciation. What is the thickets pronunciation? The thickets? Yeah. Is that a particular uh, 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 oh. brand of Cthulhu? I heard someone what, say Cthulhu what, what? the other day, and I was like, nah. It, it, I mean, I, yeah, that's... Um, all right, and so then I also want to take you to the, of course, the Green Running Online Store, uh, the Darkest of Hillside Thickets. Oh, the band. Oh, yeah. What's their um? What kind of what's their genre? They're just Cthulhuan. Uh, I am not super familiar with them, but I think it's like isn't that rockabilly kind of thing? I don't know. I think Nicole knows. Oh, oh, that's right. So Nicole says, yeah. Nicole says, uh, uh, Torin of the Thickets does say Cthulhu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, what are your thoughts on Cthulhu v. Cthulhu? I don't know. I go with Cthulhu, um, knowing full well that it's an approximation of a hideous prayer in an inhuman language. But leaving that <laughs> right. aside, um, I don't know. I've heard <laughs> that's what it boils down to for me. Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Cthulhu? And that was by the actor who, oh, what is his name? He's the same actor who played Damodar in the first Dungeons and Dragons movie from like 2000 or 99 or something. That guy. Gotcha. He was in a small, he was in like a low budget adaptation of The Call of Cthulhu that I think was in an anthology, a Lovecraftian anthology film. Oh, and that's gotcha. all I remember. Anybody? Anybody out there? It was like ages ago. Jeremy Irons? Like, 
98 or something. Jeremy Irons? No, not so Jeremy Irons. Okay. Uh, no, the guy who played the hench guy who got like a parasite in him and his lips turned blue. Oh, that old saw. Yeah. <laughs> no. Nothing makes you quite as fabulous as a alien parasite. True. Um, that's how I get it. That's how I make it through the day. My alien parasite. Yeah. Um, hey, real quick, I want to say, you know what? The quick start pairs nicely with um, the uh, the GM um, kit. We have the Cthulhu Awakens Game Masters kit. And, you know, people love these. We get uh, questions and comments and, and hopes and dreams and all that. People really do enjoy them. But uh, with Blue Lips, I do not know his name. Get it huh. for the um, – yeah, get the Game Master kit for the uh... – unredacted texts yes okay tell us right. about that unredacted it doesn't have a usual like oh there it we go have an, it doesn't have an adventure in it unexpurgated text yeah. yeah um yeah it doesn't have an adventure in it in the usual sense instead it has a collection of eldritch text um that we invented mm -hmm. <laughs> i love it yes a, a dozen, dozen fell grimoires uh, and they're not just, um, you know, and they're not just books, right? Like, um, we have the Cthulhu Awakened version of uh, Polybius. Have you heard of Polybius, Troy? Uh, no, I'm not familiar. I mean, I might have it had a case a of Polybius. about a video game that is supposed to, uh, supposed to make you lose your mind. Oh. You know, hypnotize you and make you lose your mind. Um, that was supposedly around in the 1980s and was supposedly, according to this urban legend, uh, linked to shadowy government operatives. Oh, uh, sure. Experimenting on teenage brains. And we've oh. got it. The for you. Tales from Beyond is, is, <laughs> is, is my favorite. Well, one of my favorites anyway. In there. Oh, yeah. Steve's one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the comic book from Silver Key Comics. And you did the, uh, you did the 70s, uh, Oh, that's right. I did do one, didn't I? Seventies New Age scene one, Constant Contact. Right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, we had a bunch of fun with this. Uh, each of us did a few. Um, like Chris Pramus did two of them uh, that really uh, cleave to his his interest in history. Right. Fun. And well, I, I did a couple. I did like three of them, and I think Steve did a couple, and Crystal did a couple. Um, nice. How yeah. many total were there? Well, our previous uh, M and M uh, line developer, hero in yeah. Chief. yes, hero in chief. Um, uh, the uh, yeah, hero emeritus. Um, now, how many of those unexpurgated texts are there? Twelve of them. There are twelve. Okay. Yeah. Hey, learn yeah. music. Good to see you. Stormer says, "I love this company." Well, we love you, Fred. Thanks. Thanks for saying so. Um, okay, nice. I'll tell you too. Um, you could probably also run the God Beneath the Tree as part of a kind of globetrotting campaign where you start uh -huh. with the first adventure for, with the gathering, with Ian's adventure in the core book. Yeah. Because they're chronologically not too far apart. Right. Right. And I like having these adventures in different periods because that's one of the things that is kind of that we wanted to make distinctive about Cthulhu Awakens is that we have, you know, a hundred years of support, like going out. We really awesome. do. I mean, even yeah. the core book has stuff from all, you know, all eras and it goes heavily into it. So. Exciting. Well, that's awesome. Um, and so, uh, so I, I don't want to give away any kind of, uh, of, of deeper secrets or anything, but are there other aspects or elements that we can share maybe on a mechanical kind of side of things? Is there, um, as far as, let me see. I'm, I was reading something and I wanted to get into it. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. So um, we have this and let me see where I wrote that down. Um, that This is broken down into, where did you write that, Ian? Or Evan, sorry. I said Ian, sorry. You didn't write this, Ian. Um, but okay, so the we've got um, the quick start and then there's some, there's some characters, right? Didn't we roll up, stat up some... Yes. Um, basically, it has everything you need to play, uh, except for 
the medium by which you get together, which could be a table or electronic, uh, right. and you know, uh, dice and the ability to record things. That's all you need. So yeah. this starts with you know, there's a streamlined set of rules um, that will give you um, a decent introduction to Cthulhu Awakens and to other age games because age games are pretty portable um, between each other. And it has a bunch of pre-generated characters. And these pre-generated characters are designed for the specific setting, which is, you know, Hagley, uh, England in 1940. So uh, it takes a little bit from the... Um, from the history of evacuations into the countryside, especially oh. of younger people, right? Uh, and refugee colonies during the Second World War. So uh, a number of the characters are, you know, local young people um, or young people who've been displaced by the war um, with, you know, with uh, one older gentleman as an anchor. Um, with a with a great war veteran kind of as an anchor and as a, a sort of full-on adult to deal Got with you. things right so um so yes so all you need to these, do is just grab five those of, characters and you there's can, five of them right there's five yeah. characters um i'm going to pull them up here in just a moment uh our little tech issues uh, uh waylaid all my tabs but um the uh so you're saying are, are they are they teenagers uh, four teenagers and 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 uh, you know what's old really you know uh, uh yeah four young people and an adult okay right? nice and, and they then, have different uh you know and they have different social relationships that sort of cleave to the you know cleave to the customs of the period and sean was sean has been nice enough to sort of provide an introduction to what biases were present and you know how people spoke to each other and things like that and of course you're always free to change or ignore any of that stuff if you like right yeah but you know for the sake of being true to the you know for the sake of bringing an aura of truth to the period we, we include it fantastic um i uh, draw upon your thoughts in the matter while i grab the uh file again <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what are we drawing on? Um, Your uh, tell us. I mean, I, I'm I'm curious. Well, yeah, go ahead. What it does functionally is it means that, like you know, it's not fun to start a new game by being immediately afraid you're going to die. So <laughs> we don't do that. Um, even in a horror game, like like horror movies, don't start with you know the main character is being instantly terrified and chased and selectively slaughtered or however it works in that particular movie, right? You have to have some buildup, right? So having young people and having, you know, a kind of peaceful looking town, although it's one, you know, under the shadow of the blitz, it means that we can introduce characters into different systems to do trivial things like find somebody's dog, Right. Nice. Or, you know, get along with the village clergy. Right. So we have, you know, basically things where the stakes are not terrifying <laughs> to, right, start, right. to start the characters off. So the idea is that you have kind of a low stakes introduction to how all the systems work. And then the storm comes and the planes come and the... Uh, cult comes and the creatures come and you have to apply those mechanics in a very different way. Yeah. I dig it. I dig it. We're just rolling through the uh, character sheets right now. Uh, loving that complete character sheets for folks to just, yeah, like you said, all you need to do is add dice mm -hmm. and you're ready to go. Um, go for it. Sorry. I have suggested backgrounds for each of them that integrate into the period. Nice. Now, um, talk to me, you know, we've taught, we've shared this before, but there may be people watching this for the very first time as we've, you know, sort of ramped up some of our stuff. We've got quite a few people watching right now, uh, a, a banner number. Um, tell me, let's do a, just a basic rundown 
of Cthulhu Awakens. Just the, I mean, a lot of people were also curious about the difference between, say, we do something a little different than the kind of the stereotypical madness. Right. Right. I, I feel bad foisting these off onto Malcolm, but not the just... guy who made this. Happen. All right. Yeah. All right. So the way the alienation system works is it's uh, predicated on the idea that, um, you know, the mythos doesn't really make you mentally ill um but it belongs to a way of looking at the universe that human beings are not adapted to do right however because humans are have very flexible uh spongy tasty brains uh <laughs> and are eager eager to learn they can compromise their humanity mm. in an attempt to understand right and that's something that happens reflexively, like when you see a monster that is just um, representing something totally outside your experience. Um, or it can come from, you know, following the, you know, following the very strange axioms of, you know, an occult mathematical ritual to their utmost, right? So each of these things can prompt an alienation test, which is a willpower test using a focus. Uh, and in the quick start, we simplify it so that there's one player facing alienation um, rating and there's one GM facing alienation rating. In the full game, we kind of uh, space it out based on the source of the alienation. Like, is it something you're reading or did you see a mythos god once or are you encountering a monster? um and so on and so forth right so we we split them up a little more in the full game and the idea is that these bonds were kind of like relationships if you're familiar with other age games in that the you have uh you gain a personal bond related to your alienation which you can spend on bonus uh stunt points and some of those points can be spent on special stunts which represent the fact that you know your your brain has been stretched right and now you understand these things that you shouldn't understand. And that gives you advantages that you can call on, right? Um, you might know a creature's weakness, or you might, you know, have a horrible revelation about the nature of the universe that helps you finish um, casting a working, right? Um, but there's also a bond um, called an external bond um, for alienation that the GM uses. And the GM can use it on stunts against you because the more you psychically enter the, the realm of the mythos, right? The more you're integrated into it. So it can affect you more too, right? Uh, and, some, and sometimes those stunts can even be used against you on failed tests, right? Unlike typical stunts. So you have sort of the equivalent of a bond that you can use and a bond that can be used against you um, related to the mythos. Very interesting. So, so, Todd, so when you say related to the mythos, like what is what what could a player expect a GM, or what could a GM expect as sort of uh, uh, at their fingertips to sort of inflict on on their uh, on their you know players? Well, the tests are triggered by things like trying to cast eldritch workings or encountering mythos creatures um, or just seeing something very weird, right? Yeah. yeah. So you know, an example might be that you know something opens a tomb and you know an alien tomb because they're alien tombs as yeah. everyone knows well yeah of and, course <laughs> you know that's why they never find anything with the crop circles they gotta dig they gotta dig under the crop circle <laughs> <laughs> you hear me yeah, smart you, yeah you gotta dig under the crop circle and right? take pictures so <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, you might have a test when you see the tomb and you realize this thing is real and, you know, humans are only one of many sapient species that are, you know, contending for control of our planet, right? So that might inspire, uh, like, an alien agent test with a low target number, right? Got it. And then you might go into the tomb and read on the walls that, you know... Um, humankind was, you know, created as a genetic experiment, 
um, by the elder things, which is something that is suggested in At the Mountains of Madness. And that would be called a revelation, right? So it's something that you learn that doesn't fit with the, you know, human centric universe you're used to. So that might inspire another test, right? Uh. And then you open, you know, you open the sealed chamber and there's a monster and there's another test, right? And the more tests you have, the general, generally the harder it is um, to beat them. But in the full game, what happens is that the, uh, the GM has a lot of control over that dial. So they can decide that, you know, um, the test target numbers increase and increase and increase, right? Or they can keep them stable if they want. In the quick start, we eliminate that. Um, and we also reduce the types of bonds uh, to just one uh, one type of uh, bond that's facing the player and one type of bond that's facing the GM because that's easier for a shorter game, right? Like one of the things, whereas the full system is really more uh, focused on extended, you know, to make extended play work without people just, you know, totally losing your minds. And that's one of the things uh, that I've heard a lot of feedback on is that uh, Cthulhu Awakens is really good for a, a long-term campaign. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, you know, characters are viable. <laughs> well, that's, keep moving on. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. We want to keep the spirit of it, but also it's a game, right? right? And also the spirit of the mythos is not something that any one person or set of people own, right? And that's kind of a point that we, we made throughout the game, right? is that you know we have uh you know we have a century of mythos writings now right from hundreds of published writers thousands of non-published writers and as a result you know uh it belongs you know it belongs to everybody right and because it belongs to yeah. everybody, uh you know we kind of see ourselves working on this as you know as creators in that community and we want people to do more creating in that community with the help of the game. Right. And since our focus is making a role playing game work, right. Uh, we've taken the fiction, the lore and things, and we've turned it into a role playing game setting with, you know, entry points for different factions yeah. and adventure hooks and things like that. Right. I dig it. That's great. Um, and then, Chad, if you've got any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in. But I do want to say um, we've got a, another thing kind of a tangentially, well, I mean, maybe even directly related, um, coming up. And it's kind of a big deal. Uh, the both of you will be there. But do you want to, uh, shall we dive into Engine? Oh, yes. Sure. So, um, so I guess this is an announcement of some significance. But... Uh, we are starting uh, an age system magazine. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's going to come when it comes. <laughs> but, <laughs> the, uh, but the first issue is finished. And, uh, and, and next week we are going to have an event to release it. That's now, right. the thing with Engine is that it's kind of a general uh, age magazine. So it assumes that you're familiar with the age system. And we have a number of articles uh, with different um, expansions. Like we have, you know, I'm going to try and get in a new uh, creature, new monster, mm -hmm. creature, foe kind of thing, adversary, every issue. Uh, we have some new magic. Uh, we have some new systems for, uh, to support sort of feudal fantasy age campaigns. Uh, we have uh, Joseph Car Carriker uh, created a uh, full-fledged in for Blue Rose. A uh, bunch of stuff in there. Nice. And we usually try also to make sure that uh, we have adaptations for other age games attached to each article. So the idea is that, you know, this thing is going to be something that you use for this age game, but it can be secondarily used in other age games. Right? Beautiful. So, for example, there is a new aquatic creature 
uh, in there. And we have, um, that's kind of horror themed. And we have, we, uh, the main focus is on Fantasy Age of Stranger Shores. But of course, we have notes for Blue Rose and Cthulhu Awakens. Right. Uh, right. Well, hold on. Well, you know, and I want to share this bit of information, which I think is pretty important. So we're going to have an engine launch party that is going to coincide with the actual official opening of the Atomic Think Tank. And that Ooh. is coming on Thursday, April 18th. So save the date. Mm-hmm. It's going to be at the Atomic Think Tank. We're doing live streams. We're going to have uh, Chris Pramus will be there to share some information, um, uh, speak a little bit about the age system and and reflect on its history. Uh, Malcolm, you're going to talk more about what's inside Engine. Um, and then we're going to have an age panel uh, that will be sh- uh, sharing information. Uh, and people who attend will get the Engine number one, issue number one, for free. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. They'll get it for free. Now, someone is asking, what is the sales model? The hope is to make some money, right? I don't know. It's not my department. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true Dale. Dale Ronald. <laughs> <laughs> you just want you, people to you get it. In the, <laughs> into the wrong section. Yeah, uh, Stormer, we are. We're going to kick things off in the evening. Um, I believe that we settled on uh, five Pacific, uh, eight uh, Eastern, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so it'll start, and and we'll we will get an event out. Um, we're gonna it, again, it'll be a live stream. We're gonna live stream right into the um, Atomic Think Tank. So we're gonna be testing out some of the features and uh, um, working all that stuff out. Uh, really looking forward to it. Also, really looking forward to just really pushing the boundaries of, of um, uh, our, our mighty network over there, which is growing by leaps and bounds every day. And uh, we're building aspects of the, uh, of the feature set. So, uh, but by the time we launch on the 18th, we're going to be, everything's going to be, well, you know, I'll say this mm-hmm. and it won't be, but everything will be buttoned up. It'll be perfect. But that's the idea. Uh, now, Tempo is asking, is Engine a new book? Explain the difference. Um, Engine is a, well, it is new, uh, in but it's a magazine, not a book, right? Yeah. So it's short. It has a bunch of specific articles. Um, and it uh, has... Um, and it has contact information if you want to uh, huh? get in touch with us about what you'd like to see in it. Very interesting. So so you, uh, they can send some uh, thoughts about stuff they'd like to see explored. And really, this is just an opportunity, a little extra stuff that, uh, you know, they, their, their suggestions or their ideas or their yeah, experimental, um, all that, all the above. Um. Well, uh, it depends. Like some of them are, you know, the the in um, profile for Blue Rose is an in. It's got a map. It's got uh, uh-huh. right, and so on and so forth. So you can just drop it in right away. Um, but we are looking at more experimental stuff as well, right? Fun, fun. But you know, this this first issue was really just. Um, what you know it's stuff that you can make useful for your age games right with focuses on specific age games but also support for others so um, David, there's David, a monster yeah. new monster there is an encounter that you can use right away uh we're starting there's going to be some interesting more experimental stuff for issue number two uh which i have most of the stuff for now okay nice very nice um, and then I was going to mention, uh, so David asks, uh, was wondering if, if this is a subscription model, like, is, is that something people can subscribe to? Uh, have we, we haven't worked that out quite yet, but, uh, David, what we'll do is get, uh, details on that. I guarantee you by the 18th, we will have it all buttoned up. Um, so. Well, mostly we'd like to just, you know, make sure it gets out, you know? That's right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's also that, that, that place for us to put in things. Well, I mean, yeah, the experimental stuff, but also just things that we wanted to do somewhere that, you know, maybe, but couldn't fit it, you know, yeah. like, Oh, yes. I have this cool encounter that I wanted to put in this book, but well, I can put it in engine now, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. Get those now, ideas we, out there. <laughs> I love that. Cause there's always that list of things developers kind of have that, that sort of uh, their back catalog as you, if you will, of ideas that they want to kind of get out there. Um, yeah. Uh, we have prototype st- setting, we have yes. prototype systems and even like 
like fairly big setting outlines that are just been sort of hanging around. That's great. Well, you know, I, I love that it, it, that there's some experimental stuff, that there's some practical, like get, you use it right now stuff. Uh, I really dig that. Uh, Stan asks, how frequent will the magazine be published? As frequently as we can manage. Yeah, yeah, that's great, and I love that, and I love that we are managing those expectations right at uh, <laughs> right out of, you know right out of the gate. Uh, but yeah, so we, you know, when when an, an a, a, a new issue is done, it's done. I mean, we're actively working on it. It's something that, and uh, you know, only the chef can say, right? It's only going to be well, PDF, right? That, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, mainly what would like what it. I have everything. I think I have pretty much everything I need for issue two right now. Right. What I need to do is gather it, edit it, um, test it against length, and and then uh, ready it to go to the production department. Nice, nice. And there is a wealth of, of future. I mean, the, the information on the the age system itself and all of the content that's been built around it. That's there's quite a uh, a library to mine for the extra stuff. Yeah, so so lots of good stuff coming. Um, yeah. Listen, oh, and, uh, uh, yeah. Next one is going to have an interview <gasps> that I did with someone who's sort of an age power user. Nice. <laughs> Specializes in in running solo games. If you're so involved I, in if you're involved in age community stuff, you might know who this person is. But I'm not going to say right now. Just to I, and I also that. think too, if you're involved in age community stuff, you may find yourself as a feature in Engine. Yes. Yeah. yeah cool enough. If like cool I'm enough, interested. Cool. One of the things actually I'm interested in doing is if you have like um, if you have an impressive streaming game, uh, certainly uh, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Right. Now, there's some people asking about, and inevitably, um, you know, what if they're a, an ACA creator? They can they contribute or can they uh, provide a suggestion or how do they do that? Um, right now, I'm being a little cagey about outside submissions yeah. because that involves a whole infrastructure of stuff. I'm not sure I'm ready to deal with like a slush pile, but um, we will develop something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly, I wanna, I wanna get cool um, ACA stuff in there too. Right. Nice. Um, or at least a profile of it. Yeah. And so, so right now, also, you know, right now, like it's the first issue, and we just kind of came up with it and got it ready. Yeah. But as the social aspects of it sort of build up, what would be nice is having the ability to, you know really talk to the community more and share stuff with them. It's one of the things I liked in RPG magazines when I was young and most of you weren't alive. Yes. I'm it's going to grow and evolve over time as well. You know? Yeah. 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 And so folks who think of this as a, as a bit of an incubation time for us to sort of sort out the, the, uh, you know, sort of the, the details. And then, um, and then as we move forward, you know, it naturally, I would imagine as we perfect our, our uh, approach that there'd be opportunities, but there's certainly opportunities for people to be contacted and sort of to share a bit of their expertise as it relates to whatever special thing you might be doing. So who knows when Malcolm might come knocking on your door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the only thing is that we're not going to have a letter column because we have <laughs> the atomic think tank for that. And we do uh, have the, that's all right. That's I right. enjoyed reading people argue with each other over very slow time scales and dragon <laughs> magazine in the eighties. It's just not one of those parts of the magazine experience that tempo. That yes. It, it comes in PDF format later. So, Yeah. Absolutely, Mal Malcolm. Sorry, I was just letting Temp know. Yes, PDF. It will come in PDF. Yes. Uh, also, telepathy. I will be sending it to you using my mind. So uh, keep your mind clear. Uh, gentlemen, uh, we are budding up to the top of the hour, and I do not want to keep you because, though we started a little late, you were here on time, and <laughs> so you've been putting in your your hour. I know there's stuff to do. Uh, I want to thank chat 
for hanging out and uh, uh, and for be, for your patience today. Apologies for the audio stuff. Well, we got it all sorted out, though. Uh, really looking forward to the engine party. Um, gentlemen, looking forward to, to our panels together, as well as hearing from Malcolm on the 18th. Folks, look for an interview and um, uh, an interview. I'm sorry. Look for more details and uh, an event uh, to come uh, uh, here shortly. And uh, go check out um, the uh, Cthulhu Awakens Quick Start, which you can do by scanning that little QR code at the bottom right. And uh, it will take you on your way. And uh, that way. that's right. <laughs> that away. Ah, there we go. <laughs> there right. you go. You've done it. You've done it. Uh, and as Learn Music says, make sure you're liking and subscribing. Click all the hearts. Do all the things. Uh, and thank you for your support. We're really looking forward to what we've got cooking uh, uh, here coming up real soon, including all the great stuff that are going that's going on in uh, the Atomic Think Tank. And, uh, yeah, with that, I say uh, thank you, gentlemen, for hanging out. Really appreciate it. And we'll have you back again soon. Um, but, uh, yeah, maybe not, we won't do a trifecta. Um, <laughs> next Thursday, well, I've got you all booked up with other things. So <laughs> you, 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 it will be almost <laughs> nah, pretty much. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we love, we love hanging out with you. So, uh, all right, friends have a great rest of your week, a lovely weekend. Make sure to check back with us on Monday for me and masterminds Monday. Oh. That's 2 PM Pacific. Wait, yes, wait, sir. Wait, wait. I don't know if there's swords of the shadow planet. Oh yes, please, sure. please. Okay. So the. Uh, most powerful nation in the in the shadow planet is the Tlav Empire, and uh, the Plav. You say Plav, and I'm not going to say it a third time, so that <laughs> you don't know how to call it. And uh, yeah, so their ten thousand, you know, their civilization existed for ten thousand years, and they believe they invented the concept of God. Oh, anyway, that's all I'm telling you today. Well, there you go. There's your little uh, Swords of the Shadow Planet <laughs> update. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and we will see you. Yeah. Oh, and just a reminder, uh, Mutants Best Friends Monday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. We got good stuff coming there as well. So, to play. <laughs> I love it. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.